Hi everybody, this is Diana, aka Pop Culture Diva 42, and this is my review of the season two finale of uh, The Walking Dead Beside the Dying Fire, I think the episode is called. First, let me just say that um, I think it's ridiculous how basically everybody in this group of survivors, after this, um, after the series of events in this particular episode, has pretty much established himself or herself as an excellent marksman. I'm talking dead shot level, dead shot levels of accuracy here. Well, uh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna dwell too much on that because with zombies, it really doesn't matter how good of a marksman or a sniper you are, because eventually you will run out of bullets or arrows or whatever you're using. And the thing about zombies is that there's millions of them and they're really determined. As the first like five or ten minutes of this episode goes to show you and I, I think like the first five minutes of this episode that focuses solely on the advancement of the zombie horde it really shows you why zombies are so terrifying uh, in the fact that they are relentless they are there's a lot of them and they don't stop for anything um, the first half of the episode I think First of all, let me just say that the entire episode pretty much shows you Walking Dead at the best level that it can be at right now in the sense that it was half zombie slaughter and half character development. The first half, zombie slaughter. What I liked about it is that everybody was very gung-ho, like, yes, we can defend this farm. This is our farm. We're going to defend it. And then halfway through, they're like, nope, we can't. We're all going to die unless we get out of here fast. And you really have to wonder, like, Herschel is the one because Rick was away trying to survive and, uh, and set the barn on fire. Herschel is the one who's like, no, this is my farm and we're going to stay here and we're going to defend it. But I have to ask myself, did he do that because he genuinely believe it, believed it or did he do it because he just wanted some payback? Either way, the whole trying to defend the farm thing, total fiasco. Um... But it did, I mean, it was fun. It was something that I think fans have been waiting for a long time. I know a lot of fans have been um, uh, have been saying that they've wasted far too much time on the farm. The farm kind of just slowed everything down, and I really didn't believe that until I saw, like, a couple of episodes ago, uh, when people started getting off the farm, and I saw that whoa, interesting stuff can happen off the farm. Um, but yeah, I never really had a problem with the farm, and I f did feel kind of sad that they had to abandon it, but at the same time, the whole uh, attempt to defend it was a huge waste of time, a huge waste of ammo. I'm not sorry it happened, I'm just saying that I wish Herschel's motivations would have been a little clearer in that uh, respect. I wonder if he actually believed that um, he could salvage anything. And speaking of Herschel, I was sure that he was going to bite the bullet. Uh, this episode, but Rick saved him just in the nick of time. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the farm. I loved how chaotic the action was, like people got separated, um, at certain times it seems like for sure they're going to die. I know that Carol had a real, real brush uh, with death and Andrea at the same time. I must say I like Andrea as the survivor chick. Like I love her more as the survivor chick than as more than any other role that she has fulfilled so far in the show, namely, you know, Suicidal Maniac, Shane Lover, all around pain in the ass. So Andrea, this episode, she kind of, she kind of washed her, uh, she kind of uh, uh, achieved the level of redemption in my eyes. Now, the second part of the episode is all about, you know, I'm going to say that these people were in a state of shock, uh, but I did feel the need to smack a couple of uh, of them. But please let them be in shock or something like Lori, for instance. Lori is the kind of character where either the script writers have no idea how to write her, or in which case they should be fired because they're incompetent. But or they intentionally want us to hate her. I cannot possibly explain Lori's attitude at a certain point in this uh, episode. She she comes off as such a huge bitch such an irrational person and it's like script writers nobody can stand Lori I dare anybody to watch 
Lori's behavior and attitude intently in this episode and have any kind of positive reaction to it. Seriously, nobody can stand her. You are fucking up with this is like I don't wanna Lori is not the main character of the series or whatever, but it is astounding how badly written, how irritating this character is for such a good show. Um also Carol. Carol had like Carol had a weird moment. Like I ironically, Sophia dying was the thing that made Carol kind of interesting again. But this episode when she turns against Rick is like completely out of the blue. And again, want to smack her, like this this person just is kind of responsible for you living. So maybe you should show show him a little uh cut him some slack, huh? Also, Daryl was awesome in this episode. Daryl keeps blowing my mind, and I need my mind, basically. Something that added extra pressure for the group was the revelation that they are all, in fact, infected with the virus that turns people into zombies. Now, you may think, why is this such a big problem? But think about how hopeless the situation seems now. Now, when I think the survivors deep down inside not just Rick, but everybody thought that if they find a nice enough place, nice enough isolated place to wait out the apocalypse and just wait for the zombies to starve to death or something like that, like in um, 28 Days Later, um, if they just wait somewhere, if they can just get away from it, um, eventually the zombies will die out and they will return to their normal happy lives. But then being infected means that, you know, probably Lori's kid is infected too. Whatever other kids are going to be born out of Glenn and Maggie, for instance, are going to be infected too. So basically, those kids will always live in a world where the, the dead can walk. Okay, it will never stop. Now, outside of a couple of really frustrating character moments, I think this, uh, this episode proves how good Walking Dead can be. You know, it has it did have such a slow development throughout the season that the first half of the show, because it focused so much on um, humans versus zombies and on uh, action, it did f it does feel a little bit out of place within the grand narrative of the season. But at the same time, you know, again, uh, that whole situation went to uh, f further fracture our group of survivors. You know, at least we got rid of a couple of completely useless, useless characters. So now the group is more compact, um, and hopefully that will make it more interesting to follow. In the next season, we've already seen the introduction of a new character and uh, a new setting, which should mean a lot of interesting stuff for next season. Uh, if if you've read the comics, then you obviously know what I mean. If you haven't read the comics, well, basically they're going to reach another place which they think is a safe ha haven. But is it? So, that's pretty much it for the second season of Walking Dead. Overall, I think I actually enjoyed it more than I did the first season. Not a lot more. There's still some things that are not firing on all, all cylinders. Still some improvements to be made. But overall, and I gotta say, Andrew Lincoln, before I, uh, before I end this, Andrew Lincoln delivered a great performance this evening, I think. Like, in his scene with Laurie, in his scenes with Carl, um, and when he put his foot down at the end of the episode and it's like, this ain't a democracy, it's a dictatorship. Actually, that's from the, that's not from the episode. But, um, yeah, Andrew Lincoln really, um... And even the past episode, too. Like, the last couple of episodes, Andrew Lincoln has been great. Uh, a little too much speechifying for my tastes, um, especially in previous episodes. But all in all, you know, uh, he really comes off as the kind of guy that you will follow to the mouths of hell. Which is basically where he is right now. <laughs>